Welcome back to The Lemon Abroad. Since I know that a lot of you who watch my channel are interested in Italy or maybe moving to Italy one day, today I wanted to share with you some of my top language learning resources for learning Italian. There is a lot I want to share with you, so let's get right to it. So first I wanted to begin with a little bit about my story of learning Italian. As you may know, I live in Italy and I've lived in Palermo for almost four years now. At this point, I would say my Italian is pretty good. I have friends who I only speak with in Italian and obviously I use Italian every day whenever I'm outside of my house in all kinds of different situations. So while I don't really have any problems communicating with anyone, I know that my level of Italian is obviously not as advanced as I can speak in English. I don't use the most complex tenses or advanced grammar, but I'm also really comfortable with the level that I'm at. And that's because I've come to realize that language learning is a lifelong journey. Even in our native languages, we're always evolving with the way we speak. And so that's also how I think about my journey with with Italian. I'm always learning new words or phrases. For example, whenever I go somewhere new, I learn the words about that particular situation. Or when I meet new people, I hear phrases that they use that I may have never heard someone else use before, especially when I meet people who are from different regions of Italy, for example. So I've come to appreciate language learning as really this lifetime process that is never going to be just finished. It's always going to be evolving and changing and there's always going to be something new to learn. And in fact, I do still continue to study Italian now. In a little bit, I'll show you some of the specific resources I'm using to continue to advance my language skills. But first I wanted to give a little advice to those of you who are just starting out. And these really go for learning any language. The first thing I would say is try to be patient. Like I said, language learning is a journey that never really ends. It's not that there's one goal that you can one day say, oh, I've learned everything and now I'm done. There are definitely milestones along the way, such as being able to read a book for the first time or watch a movie in your foreign language without subtitles and be able to follow the story. Or for example, when you realize that you are able to have conversations more comfortably. Those are things that will happen naturally the more you continue to learn and they are definitely worth celebrating. The next thing I would say is try not to compare yourself to others. I know that that is not always easy, not only in language learning, but in so many other aspects of our life. But it's a situation that you might find yourself in more frequently. For example, if you're in a language learning class with other people, everyone is going to learn at their own pace. Some people are able to pick up languages faster than others, but if you find yourself moving at a different pace, it doesn't mean that you are behind other people. It just means that you are taking your own time to internalize all that you're learning. And since, like I said, there's no real finish line with language learning, there really is no competition between us. Everyone is just learning and trying their best. So just remember to stay focused on your own language journey. I would also say don't compare your learning style to anyone else because just as everyone has their own pace, different people are going to have different styles of learning that work best for them. So I would experiment with different styles of learning, for example, taking a class or studying on your own or studying with a private tutor, and then you can see what works best for you. If something is working, keep going with it. And if something isn't working, then just let it go. And again, try to be patient. For example, when people compliment me on my Italian today, I am so happy and appreciative that they can recognize that. But I also remember how much time and hard work it took for me to get here. I've been learning Italian off and on for over 10 years now. Being able to speak Italian is definitely not something that happened overnight. And I also recognize that I 
I still have so much work ahead of me to get to the level that I would like to be at. So if you really want to learn a language, you have to keep at it. There may be periods where you don't have the time or resources to dedicate yourself to the language, but that doesn't mean that you are going to lose it. If you're finding language learning to be overwhelming, sometimes it is good to even take a step back just so that you don't become frustrated and want to walk away from it. But if it's something that you really want and that you really love, you'll be able to come back to it and pick up where you left off. And that leads me to my last piece of advice, which is to look at your motivation. Given that it takes a lot of time and effort to learn a language and to be able to see your progress in it, it's important that you examine your motivation for learning a language. There can be so many different reasons why someone wants to learn a new language. It could be for work or school. It could be for love. It could be because this is something that you're really interested in. But just try and keep that reason in your mind and try and keep learning fun. I think that the more you enjoy it and the more fun you're having, the easier it's going to be for you to learn the language and the more you're going to want to invest your time and energy in doing so. I know I learn much better when I'm doing something that I'm interested in and that I really enjoy. So try and keep your language learning process light and fun. I think that by doing so, it will be much easier and fun for you to learn the language. Okay, so now let's talk about resources. I began learning Italian at university. So of course I began with a totally beginner's level course where we were introduced to the basics of grammar and some vocabulary. I think this can be really helpful to help you establish the foundations of the language, which you can then build off of through a variety of methods. After graduating, I actually did not continue to learn formally in classes like that, but I used a lot of different resources to continue learning the language. During this time, I was traveling in and out of Italy quite frequently, so I would have opportunities to continue speaking the language, even if it was these really short interactions like in hotels or restaurants. I was able to continue practicing at least a little bit. Even though it was a really gradual process, through the years I could see that I was learning and improving my language skills. Some of the resources I began using were grammar books, which honestly, I'm still working through them. <laughs> I've probably had them for at least five years now, but I'm finally getting to the last chapters where there's the really advanced grammar. The first book I have is this Italian verb tenses, and I will put a list of all the books in the description box below. So this book is literally just explaining the Italian verb tenses, how to form them, and when to use them. It's really good to practice conjugating the verbs in their different forms and learn learning the exceptions to the rules, but I find it most helpful to pair it with another book as well, which is Italian Tutor. And this book, in each chapter, they will focus on one verb tense. So I can learn the verb tense in the first book and then really apply it in the second book because the second book has more practical exercises like reading and writing. And each chapter also will revolve around a certain theme. So you'll learn a lot of new vocabulary and also situational dialogues, for example. So that's what I found work really well for me because Italian has a lot of different verb tenses to learn, but I think it's also really important to make that knowledge practical because at least for me, I want to learn the language to be able to use it in different situations. I've also found these 30 day mastery books to be helpful. These will focus on one aspect of grammar, such as the subjunctive, which is what I'm studying now. It will use this aspect throughout a story that's told over 30 days so each day there's a small passage that you can read because one thing about language learning is that everything builds on one another so what I notice is that once I begin learning about a certain verb tense for example then I begin to recognize it when other people are speaking and then I also begin to use it myself I really love 
learning about learning languages as well. So it's really interesting when you begin to notice yourself doing this. For a long time, I've also been supplementing my language learning with watching YouTube videos. My favorite Italian teacher on YouTube is Lucrezia from her channel, Learn Italian with Lucrezia. She has videos really for every level of learning Italian from beginning to more advanced, and she covers a lot of topics. I still watch her videos today and I always learn something new. What's amazing is that I'll be watching her videos today and I'll remember watching them five years ago. And I remember that at the time I would think, wow, I can't wait until one day I can hopefully understand her videos or be able to pronounce this word. And now I can. And it's such a feeling of accomplishment and I feel so glad that I kept going in my Italian language learning journey, even when it seemed really hard. Especially during the times that I was not in Italy during this period, I would try to keep myself exposed to the language. One way I could do that from anywhere is listening to music. I would also look up the lyrics to the songs and try and sing along. I would translate the lyrics so I could know the meanings. And I do this with a lot of different languages I'm learning because I think if you have some good music to listen to, you'll really want to learn how to sing along. And again, it just keeps the language learning fun. And it's a really natural process because it doesn't feel like you're studying, but you are still learning and internalizing the language. Another way you can learn from anywhere is using different apps on your phone. So one app I've used a lot is Duolingo, which is really great, especially when you're starting out because it will give you different sentence structures, but you'll also learn a lot of new vocabulary and it's just really fun to practice. Another app I like is called Drops, and this is a vocabulary app, so it's really great to learn a lot of new words. I also have some of these parallel text books. So these are books with Italian short stories that were originally written in Italian, and on the opposite facing page, you'll see the short story translated into English. These books are really good, especially when you're first starting to read on your own, because if you need to see the translation, it's right there. You don't have to put the book down and go translate it and interrupt the flow of reading. Once you've got to this point where you're able to read in Italian, I would also suggest finding a book that you're interested in that's an original Italian book and beginning to read that on your own. That's because, as I said, it's easier to learn a language when it's something that you're interested in and it's something that you enjoy. Now, while I definitely suggest that when you're reading books, you look for books that are written in Italian originally. The first book in Italian that I read on my own was actually Il Piccolo Principe. So the translation of The Little Prince. And this is because I know this book practically by heart. I've read it in French and English, and it's one of my favorite books. So I already knew the story. I already knew the way the book flowed. And I also knew that I enjoyed it and that I would be motivated to read it. So that is why I selected it for my first book. Another way to increase your exposure to the language is by watching Italian TV and movies. You can look for these on your streaming service or perhaps at your local library. At least as of right now, for example, you could go to Rai Play, which is the Italian national TV service, and they have a lot of series and movies available to stream for free. It can be really helpful when you're learning if you're able to, for example, first use subtitles in your own language and then move on to subtitles in Italian and then eventually be able to watch without the subtitles. It's also really interesting to watch TV shows and movies because it gives you a glimpse into Italian culture and daily life in Italy, and also the differences between the various regions in Italy. And you'll also see that there are differences in their accents and the way they speak. And finally, the most important resource in my opinion is finding a context in which you're able to speak the language. So whether that's Italian courses or if you're traveling to Italy, you can also find a tutor, for example, online through a site like italki. I have had various tutors on there for different languages throughout the years, and I think it's a great way to practice your speaking and continue to learn the language. Once you get to that immediate advanced level, it really is just about continuing 
continuing to use the language. Once you begin reading and watching TV and having conversations with people, you will learn more through experience rather than studying. You're going to listen to how other people are speaking, the different phrases they're using, and then you will begin to incorporate that in your own use of the language. When I first started learning Italian at university, I really struggled with it. I remember being really focused on being really perfect and strict with how to use the different verb tenses and the conjugations and remembering the exceptions. I remember also having some professors who would really critique my pronunciation and I remember being really discouraged by that. But what I've learned is that all of these things will come with time and effort. The more you use the language, the more you learn and the more you improve. Even now, speaking Italian every day, people recognize that I'm not a native speaker. They hear my accent. And while that used to make me self-conscious, it doesn't anymore because I've learned to accept that that is just the way I'm going to speak. And that's how many people will speak in their second language. Learning another language is the accomplishment in itself. I think putting a lot of pressure on yourself to try and be perfect is not actually conducive to language learning. When I was first learning Italian, I was was really scared to speak because I didn't want to make any mistakes. But someone who was really close to me, who immigrated from Italy to the United States and would try and speak with me in Italian, would tell me, if you don't start speaking, you never will. Even if you make mistakes, you have to just keep trying. There's an Italian proverb that someone once told me when I was being too shy to speak to them that says, Spagliando si impara. You learn by making mistakes. So I really encourage you if you are struggling with something similar to just try, just begin speaking. It does get easier and you do improve. Even if you are making some mistakes, even if you have to struggle to find a word, that's how you learn. And I would also encourage you to think if you were in the opposite situation and you were speaking with someone who was trying to learn your language. I would understand that they are trying something new and that they are really making the effort to speak. So that is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it useful in your language learning journey. Let me know if you have any more questions about learning Italian in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao!